Where Easter Comes From by Richard Gunther Shortened and Simplified for a Young Audience To understand where Easter comes from, we have to hop into our time machine and go back about 4,000 years to the land of Egypt. At the time we arrive, we find the mighty nation of Egypt and a small nation of Hebrews. The Egyptians have made the Hebrews into slaves. God wanted to help the Hebrew slaves. He found a man called Moses and appeared to him in the form of a tree on fire. Go, tell the king of Egypt to let my people go, said God. So Moses went to tell the king of Egypt what God had said. When Moses told the king of Egypt what God had said, the king was very angry. I will not let them go, he said. So God sent punishments called plagues. In the first plague, God turned all the water in Egypt into blood. Yuck! The Egyptians couldn't drink it. This did not change the king of Egypt's mind, so God sent frogs. This did not change the king of Egypt's mind either, so God sent lice. When God sent flies, the king of Egypt changed his mind but he changed it back again as soon as the flies were gone. After that, God sent sickness to all the cattle of Egypt. But the king of Egypt was very stubborn. He would not change his mind. He would not let the Hebrew people go. So God sent boils. You can all go, said the king of Egypt. But when the boils were healed, he changed his mind again. You cannot all go, he said. Then God sent hail. The hail destroyed crops all over Egypt, but the king of Egypt would not let the Hebrew people go. So God sent locusts. They ate everything that was left after the hail. The king of Egypt almost said yes to Moses, but then he changed his mind again and said, No! Then God sent darkness. It was thick, black darkness, so dark even a flame could not be seen. This was the ninth plague. But still, the king of Egypt would not change his mind. The tenth plague was coming. God said he would take the life of every firstborn. This meant that every oldest child in every family would die. But God said there was a way to avoid this coming tenth plague. He said a lamb had to be killed and its blood put on the top and sides of the doorway. Any house with the blood of a lamb around its doorway would be safe from this plague. The Hebrew people obeyed God, so they were safe. That night, God sent an angel to take the life from every firstborn or oldest child in every home. But when the angel saw the blood of the lamb, he passed over that house. Now let us hop into our time machine again and fly forwards in time from Egypt to 2,000 years ago. We touch down in the land of Israel, in the home of a man called Joseph. 
Just before Jesus was born, an angel came to speak to him. Joseph was the legal father of Jesus because he was about to marry Mary, the mother of Jesus. Your wife will have a son, said the angel, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. The name Jesus means Savior. A Savior is someone who saves someone else. What did Jesus save people from? Look, the Lamb of God! When Jesus was grown up, he came one day to the Jordan River. A friend of his called John saw him and said, Look, the Lamb of God! who takes away the sin of the world. When Jesus was about 33 years old, he allowed wicked people to nail him to a cross. On the cross, Jesus gave his life, and like a lamb, he shed his blood. Remember how the angel of death passed over all the houses which had the blood over the door? In the same way, God's judgment of sin passes over all who trust in the blood of Jesus, the Lamb. He died for us to give us a way to escape judgment. Passover and Easter are the same thing. When we trust in Jesus, He becomes our Passover Lamb. I trust in you, Jesus, my Savior. This is where Easter came from. This is what Easter is all about. If you want to know more, read the Bible. In the books of Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John.